It's a nearly $10 billion project where even the mere mention of it can set off serious debate. Many have described the plan to build a 45-kilometer canal through Istanbul as risky as it is ambitious. But now things are moving forward. First envisioned centuries ago and after years of planning, the Turkish government has approved development plans for the canal. Turkey's transport and infrastructure minister said that construction is set to begin in the very near future. The canal, which is estimated to take seven years to build, will connect the Black Sea in Istanbul's north to the Sea of Marmara in the south, allowing ships to bypass the already congested Bosphorus. That's one of the main arguments for building a second waterway through Istanbul. The recent blockage of the Suez Canal was also a selling point for the Turkish government, which argues that diversified trade routes are crucial in keeping global trade flowing. Turkey's role as a middle corridor country in China's trillion dollar Belt and Road Initiative could also boost the need for a second point of access in and out of the Black Sea. But the project has many detractors as it does supporters. Will the benefits outweigh the risks? And to answer that, joining me in the studio is Taha Meli Arvas, who is a financial analyst and from St. Gallen, Switzerland. Guido Kozi is a professor of macroeconomics at St. Gallen University. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Taha, now that the development plans have been approved, uh, what's next for Canal Istanbul and what's your take on that project? Right. It seems like it's on track uh, for development, as you, as you mentioned. Um, the canal, the way I see it, is an environmental uh, project. Uh, we, we've just experienced this major um, a tail event with the closure of the Suez Canal yes. for almost a week. And we're talking about a huge, huge ship um, uh, that rammed into the canal, as, as we all know from, from the uh, reenactments and from the information. So imagine that type of incident happening, mm -hmm. that type of catastrophe, catastrophe happening in a city of 20 million like Istanbul, um, with a waterway, as you can see, that's so pristine and it's crowded. There's people living on both sides, obviously. And imagine it not containing, not carrying rather, containers and consumer goods, but oil or cement or other types of um, uh, chemicals or potentially dangerous things. Uh, in that case, that would be a major environmental catastrophe that would hurt Turkey for decades to come. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see from, maybe you can see it in the background for in, in the images, and I'm sure it was in the piece, the Bosphorus is not a straight canalway. It's very windy, it's very difficult to manage, even the most experienced With and seasoned. With currents, turns. Ab absolutely, all these currents, and it was a little bit of wind that, that pushed yeah. the uh, evergreen off, off course there. So the same thing can happen in Turkey. So it's important, it's essential that a solution uh, is come up, is, has been come up with, and. Canal Istanbul is late even. Turkey is maybe you know, decades late in implementing such mm -hmm. a, a, a strategy. And so if we worry about the environment, then it's essential that we do something like this mm. to uh, overcome that. Okay, so Guido, its construction will take about seven years and it's uh, going to cost at least $10 billion. Is the time frame and the budget realistic for uh, such a big project? Well, it is. Uh, a few years ago, I would have been a bit skeptical, but nowadays, after the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, that affected uh, all the most important economies, I can see that governments are reacting by uh, exerting a lot of stimulus, uh, so spending a lot of money, uh, and most notably the United States, which is now planning to, to spend uh, uh, an additional $2.3 uh, trillion in investment uh, um, that would affect uh, uh, the whole country, in particular hundreds of billions of dollars in infrastructures. Mm -hmm. So from a macroeconomic point of view, um, uh, adjusting for uh, the relative size of the countries, adjusting for the GDP, adjusting also for the purchasing power of the dollar mm -hmm. in Turkey, I think that the investment uh, uh, the Turkish government is planning to do is very much in line with what the United States are planning to do at the moment. All right. So, uh, Taha, President Erdogan said the project is designed to raise Turkey's GDP to $2 trillion by 2023. Um, is this viable? Sure. I think if you look at uh, Joe Biden's, President Biden's election campaign, as, as, as uh, Professor Guido just said there a second ago, um, Professor Kosi said a second ago, second ago rather, 
uh, Build Back Better was Biden's uh, campaign message. Mm -hmm. It's about building infrastructure, spending money on public works projects. Uh, this will cause major, this will lead to major employment, a decrease in, in the unemployment rate. Hundreds of thousands of jobs, primarily, secondarily, and tertiarily, will be created, created because of this canal, and that will add to GDP. As the professor just mentioned, it's a, it's a very important, these type of public works projects revitalize countries. I mean, just look at Egypt and Panama and their canals and what a huge impact that has had mm -hmm. on their countries. So, uh, Guido, how resilient or vulnerable you think such projects are to global economic uh, shifts or shocks? Yeah, uh, of course, I mean, uh, the infrastructure investment has two sides. Uh, the productive side is very important because it, it is not just a demand booster for the economy, but it also a supply uh, booster. And for Turkey, the so-called marginal product or capital is certainly very high. So it will produce income, okay, especially because, uh, of course, being out of the uh, Montreal Convention, uh, the government can even uh, have some uh, some moderate um, toll uh, revenues from it. Moreover, it will obviously facilitate uh, maritime traffic uh, uh, for the whole uh, Black Sea and also for the uh, connections with Europe. So this is certainly a good thing. On the, on the risk side, there are financial risks mm -hmm. because being a, a relatively long-term project, it is very sensitive to the interest rates. Yes. So now uh, in the United States, uh, there are tensions, some inflationary tensions that are leading to, uh, to the expectation of higher interest rates. Of course, we don't know exactly what the, what the what Fed will do. They are reassuring as the, the European Central Bank is reassuring. However, if there is, if there are, um, if, if there is a wave of uh, uh, increasing interest rates uh, worldwide, this may transmit uh, into Turkey, uh, and and that could maybe tra transform a project that may uh, seem extremely profitable in something that may become uh, uh, a bit less profitable. Yeah, Sota, the Turkish transport minister said Turkey would generate about a billion dollar uh, from transit fees when the canal is constructed. Why would ships choose the canal over Bosphorus, which they don't pay at all? Um, I once traveled from France uh, across the Mont Blanc Tunnel, and I remember the time, uh, not far from where Professor Coetzee is now, and the toll was something like $100 at the time. The euro was much stronger then. Mm -hmm. and, and the toll, I, I was shocked at the, at the toll, and the toll person said, if you don't like it, you can you know, drive four hours around Mont Blanc and you can get there. The same thing uh, applies to the Bosphorus. There are at times uh, many days, uh, waiting periods of many days. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like, and these are ships that cost tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to rent per day. So if you'd like, you can wait for four or five days until the Bosphorus clears up, potentially. But now you have an alternative which will allow you to pass faster. Mm -hmm. And this is great for not only Turkey and for uh, Istanbul, but for all uh, transportation, uh, users of transportation. If you need to ship cargo between uh, you know, the Mediterranean and the Black Sea, and you have to wait right now as you do several days at times because mm. the Bosphorus is very... So you'll save cost and absolutely. energy and time. Ab you, 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 it's like, so it's worth the price, huh? Absolutely. I mean, people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> to go through the Suez Canal. It's the same thing. All right. right. So, yeah. Guido, what are the future risks uh, facing this project on maritime traffic and trends like um, green energy and decarbonization, for example? Yes, of course, decarbonization is important. Uh, and uh, uh, also, you know, Europe is determined to to move to zero emissions pretty soon. Uh, so there could be a reduction in oil traffic. Um, uh, at the same time, I, that could be counterbalanced by the growth prospects of the countries in the area. Uh, so I would I would balance the uh, um, cleaner energy uh, switch, which mm -hmm. is underway. Uh, with the potential growth prospects that would even be stimulated by the canal itself, because I agree that you know having something that works better for transportation would certainly facilitate. So there are pros and cons. Also, maybe uh, the decarbonization strategy may may allow even even governments to raise some some little bit of revenue uh, from taxing. Um, the, mo the most polluting uh, ships without, of course, destroying traffic 
uh, completely. Mm. Um, other risks uh, could be related to the dollar. Uh, maybe if I could give advice, I would say diversify the way you uh, uh, you borrow. And not, I know that for Turkey, of course, it will have to borrow in dollars, but maybe maybe borrowing perhaps in euro, in euros themselves, or yuan remimbis. So having a, a diversified portfolio would mitigate the risks on the financial side as well. Mm. So, um, Taha, who do you think the potential investors would be? Which countries are most likely to invest uh, to this multi-billion dollar project. I think it's, it's uh, the countries will be looking at, I mean, there's two types of investors. There's strategic investors and there are those investors who want to return, maximize their uh, returns on assets. I think uh, the second, the latter, those who are looking for returns, every country would be excited to invest in a project mm -hmm. where they'll get great real returns, especially in a period of time. We're talking about, as Professor Coetzee just mentioned, a global pandemic, a post-global pandemic where we have this world where uh, inflation uh, I think that's, I think that's, uh, we're looking forward there. I think the deflationary picture in Europe was probably going to be stronger going forward. Mm -hmm. um, growth was slow in general in the world. We're looking at stagflation in a lot of countries, including the United States. So in that respect, people will invest in this, I think. And strategically, we're looking at those countries that border Turkey that need investments, uh, that need to use this canal. So, Like China? Like, obviously, China is one of the biggest uh, investors in large infrastructure projects. And it China, likes to invest in international Absolutely, projects. yeah, this is China's MO. They do this all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Russians will obviously invest, I think, um, and those countries on the Black Sea. There are some speculations about that. Oh, yeah? The Russians could be worried about this canal, but we'll have okay. to see about that. So, Guido, um, what kind of an impact it could have on Turkey's role as a middle corridor within China's Belt and Road Initiative? Well, uh, major impact, uh, impact because we are, uh, we are we will be seeing an improvement in quality, in quantity and quality at the same time. So a facilitation of traffic, which is also in the interest of China. So in the Belt and Road uh, uh, project, uh, of course, there is also a terrestrial connection which passes through through Istanbul itself. Um, so it it will be it will be very very useful this transformation of of, of uh, a connection that at the moment as was mentioned has several qualitative problems and risks into uh, something that becomes more straightforward um, uh, and also uh, true there there are um, there have been declining growth prospects in the west but the east has immense growth prospects uh, and that could um, compensate it uh, so um, I, I think the role of, of, of uh, uh, Turkey as, as a gate to Europe uh, for linking the a Asia and Europe, as we know, I mean, it does uh, uh, geographically, could be of immense importance. This is why I think it would be nice to involve more European investors as well. Um, uh, as, as they are now, Europe is very important for investors. Last year, uh, Italy was, uh, was the major investor. Uh, so um, that would be extremely uh, useful for both uh, um, uh, Europe and, and, and Turkey and uh, the, the the eastern countries like uh, China and perhaps yes. when they decide to open a bit more also India. All right, we'll have to leave it here. Guido, thank you very much for joining us from Switzerland and Taha, thank you very much for being with me on the set. My pleasure.